Welcome back to the Ops Room everyone, thank you very much for tuning in. If you've not subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so for more content like this. And today we are going to be discussing what I think is very important knowledge, the difference between a ferro rod and a flint and steel. I'm also going to be discussing how the two pieces of kit work, how they operate and what tinders to use in each method. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so something that I'm very passionate about is fire lighting. I'm also very passionate about communication. If you are watching right now, you may think you know what this is called. Now, a lot of people call this a flint and steel. However, they couldn't be further from the truth. A flint and steel is mostly a natural product. This here is completely man-made. So this is called a ferro rod, not to be mistaken by a flint and steel. And this piece here is a soft metal. It is made of various different metals and it is called a ferro cerium rod or ferro rod for short. This is a very soft metal and because of that, you're able to scrape it with a piece of steel or any kind of metal or even a hard stone if you want to. So if I scrape it like that, See how easy that is, I can do it very, very easily with hardly any effort. The temperature of those sparks are pretty hot, uh, so that is what creates the fire. If you've got a good enough tinder source, my favourite tinder source when using a ferro rod is a piece of birch bark. If you scrape this with a knife or even the little kind of piece of steel that you get with the ferro rod, if you scrape that into a powder and then put a spark to it, it will just go up in flames. It is a great source of fuel. So this is a ferro rod, and it's basically just a man-made alloy metal, uh, which is very soft and easy to scrape. Uh, just a little piece of metal there to scrape it with. And you can also use, as well as birch bark, you can also use what's called King Alfred's Cake, or Dildinia Concentricia, if you're into the Latin names. Uh, it's basically a little fungus that grows on dying beech trees, I believe. And this is great for taking a spark, especially if you want to move your fire somewhere else. If you put a spark in there, that'll just keep smouldering away for hours and hours. Great piece of kit. So, we are now going to move on to the flint and steel. So, this here is a piece of flint. It's a stone and it is found in nature. And that is what they used to make arrowheads, spearheads, axe heads, any kind of tool from back in the Stone Age day. They also, when the Vikings came along, they were able to manipulate iron ore into solid pieces of iron. So that's where this came from. This right now, this one is a titanium steel. However, back in the Viking days, they would have had iron ones. It's basically the same thing. It's a, it's a metal that scrapes off. Now if I scrape this on here, you can see the little sparks coming off it. And what you're basically doing is you're scraping the bits of steel off of this using the flint. The flint, believe it or not, is harder than the steel. That's why the steel gives way before the flint does. When you scrape the steel off, it heats up and generates a spark and that's what you're wanting to catch the tinder with so that's how this works you're just scraping the steel off with the flint however you can get other metals such as titanium which is an even hotter spark if you look very closely the spark should be more whiter than the other one and it will be harder it will be harder to scrape the bits of metal off However, when you are using a titanium striker, you're going to get a hotter spark and therefore an easier chance of getting a fire. So that's the difference between the two. Now I've seen, believe it or not, I've seen a lot of experts, like real experts apparently, calling this a flint and steel. This is not a flint and steel. It's not even close to being a flint and steel. This is a flint and steel. 
because that is a flint stone. This is a ferro rod because that is a ferro cerium piece of metal. So there's the difference, ferro rod, flint and steel. Let's move on and we'll show how these two pieces of kit actually work. Okay, so right here we have our flint and steel and we have our ferro rod. Now the best method to get a ferro rod to create a fire is simply using birch bark. And all I would do here is I would get the birch bark and I would just scrape it into a little powder. Just scrape off the bark, scrape it up into little bits, go into there and I would strike it. You can also, if you want, scrape it lightly so that you're putting little shards of ferro cerium onto the tinder. Give it one big scrape and then that would go up in flames. Then I can add it to my bird's nest and create a fire. With flint and steel, it is a bit of a different process and different tinder is required. So, what I'll do is I'll grab a little piece of this here. Now this is what's called Amadou. This is from the horseshoe fungus. If you look really closely. That is from the horseshoe fungus. It has been processed down into a fluff. What we'll do is we'll hold it right on the edge of the flint there. Get our steel and give it a hard strike. And as you can see, it's starting to smolder already. We would then place that in our tinder bundle, blow into it to create a fire. In amongst the tinder bundle, for flint and steel or ferro rod, we can also add a little bit of King Alfred's cake as a coal extender. This just lets the coal burn for slightly longer, giving you enough time to make a flame. So there you go, that's the difference between a ferro rod and a flint and steel. After watching this video, I don't want to hear anyone call this a flint and steel anymore. This is a ferro rod. This is a flint and steel. Remember that. And if you've not done so already, get yourself a couple of these. You can pick this up pretty cheaply and you can also pick these up pretty cheaply as well. Grab a couple, get outside, practice your fire lighting skills, but also be safe. Thank you very much for watching and tune in next time to the Ops Room. Option out.